Hi, I'm Connor. In this video, I'm going to show my painting technique for this miniature. It's a 3D printed maned wolf. It's from the Beautiful Creatures Kickstarter. So first I'm preparing my wet palette. And I'm going to use some reference for painting this. I have a reference photo of the front and of the back of the maned wolf. It's important to work from reference so that you get the colors right. I like to put some water on the palette and then lay out the colors. The entire process takes about an hour, so I'm going to speed it up. The video will take about 15 minutes. Uh, this is the first coat and I'm diluting the paint a lot so that it's not too thick. Uh, this, this miniature was printed in green resin and it's already had an undercoat of light grey but you can still see the green showing through. I'm not going to try to completely cover the green in the first coat. Um, if I was to put on a thick coat that was completely opaque that would obscure the interesting details of the model. This model has nice fur texture and so I want to make use of that for dry brushing later. So I'm going to make sure these coats are very thin. You'll see I keep dipping the paintbrush into the water. And I'm using a technique called wet blending here where you paint the model very quickly with a large brush with lots of water. And that way you can mix the colors on the model. So here I'm checking the reference for the face to get the right colors on the face. So I'm using black and white, an orange, an ochre, and a cream color. So that's the progress after the first base coat. I let this dry, and then I come back and do a second base coat. And this one is also very thin. And, but after this base coat is complete, there should be no more of the green of the original resin visible. You can see here I'm diluting the black a lot to do the main. Now I'm checking the reference here and I notice that the back of the wolf is more saturated. It has a more intense color. So I'm using a little bit more orange and mixing that in. Whereas the inside of the legs and the belly are much lighter. Here you can see I'm wet blending. I just apply some paint, then wet the brush and smear the paint around to try and get a nice mix. I put a, a light spot here on the neck and then I just use a wet brush to mix that into the orange. And that's the progress after the second base coat. So now it's ready to start doing some washes to add contrast. So the base coat is deliberately desaturated, slightly pastel, and slightly light. I'm going to use Citadel's Reichland Flesh Shade. I find these pots are easy to spill, so I have a, a holder that keeps it upright and open. This flesh shade is a very nice, rich, orangey brown. Um, I switch to a larger brush here so I can apply the wash more quickly. Um, it's important to complete the whole wash before it starts to dry is then you can come back with a wet brush and feather the edges like this or remove the wash from areas where it's too strong. There's the first wash finished. I let that dry and then I come back with a second wash. This is Army Painter's Strong Tone which is a dark brown chestnut wash. I'm only going to apply this on the top of the model. 
way to avoid the tail of the light, the light parts. Putting a bit of this on the black legs. I mixed the black with orange, so it's not a completely black paint. And so this, this wash can shade it slightly. Okay, now I'm going to do a dry brush. So I mix orange with a, a little white. It's important here to use brush strokes that are perpendicular to the fur. You mustn't stroke along the fur or the, the paint will get into the recesses. Now after dry brushing, you can find that the highlights look a bit chalky, and perhaps too, too, too much contrast. So you can go back with another wash. I'm using Reichland Flesh Shade again, just to reduce the contrast on that dry brush. And I'm also painting it carefully uh, to highlight the musculature, not a bit of uh, detailed shading. So wherever I want contrast around the limbs or around the tail, I use a little bit of wash. This way the, the details in the model are doing the work for you. You don't have to have perfect paint strokes. As long as your base coats are very thin, you can use dry brushing and washes to pick out all the existing detail on the miniature. Well, I'm going to do some details now, so I'm mixing a light color with some thinner medium. Thinner medium reduces the opacity of the paint uh, without making it too too runny. It stays sticky, but it's not fully opaque, and this is good for small details. I've switched to a, a brush with a good point. It's a sable brush with a fine tip. And then looking at the reference of the face to see where the highlights go. So he's got a light light spot on his eyebrows and also just above the lips. Here I'm just picking out some whiskers on the on the side of the face just to frame it nicely. I found there wasn't enough contrast in the main, so I'm adding a little more black. I've mixed this black with the thinner medium, so it looks grey when it's wet, but it will dry as a, a semi-opaque black. So now the model is finished, I'm going to give it a coat of matte varnish, so that when I'm painting the base I don't damage the paint. I'm just going to do a simple sand base. I put a bit of PVA glue on it and then spread it with an old brush. I'm trying not to get glue on the feet. And I have sand with different size grains so that the texture will be interesting. The green of this resin is very strong so I'm going to undercoat the base with the light grey first just to take away some of that green, make it easier to put a color over it. I'm using an earth brown for the rim of the base and an ochre for the sand. This ochre paint is actually an airbrush paint, so it's very thin, which is good for covering the sand. I'm gonna shade the base with Army Painter's Soft Tone is a lighter brown uh, wash color. Once that's dry, I dry brush it with a mixture of ochre and white. Or I have a flat dry brushing brush, which is good for um, avoiding the feet. And I 
I'm going to add a little more white to get a second layer of highlight. Just to add a touch of colour, I'm going to put some of this gamer's grass, uh, yellow flowers on the base. I think those will look nice with the colour of the maned wolf. These are self-adhesive, so you don't need any glue. Now as a final touch, I'm going to put some gloss varnish on the eyes and the nose. This will make them look wet. The, uh, the varnish will catch a specular highlight as the model rotates. We'll give it a touch of life. You'll see when it rotates here that the eyes and the nose glint a little bit. This model is part of a Kickstarter with other animals, such as this boar, and bear, and lynx. I'll put a link in the video description to where you can get them. Thanks for watching.